Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Software Architecture in London. I'm here with Bhavna from PubNub. Yes. Hi, so, Mike. hi. So, can you unpack a little bit about what PubNub does? Yeah, for sure. So, PubNub provides real time infrastructure as a service. So, if you were trying to build the next big chat application or an IoT application, or think of a multiplayer game where you have all these devices. And when I say devices, it could be your laptop, mobile phones, or it could be um, IoT devices out in the field, or dashboards, whatever it is that you want to connect. We do that in real time. So we've built out this huge, highly distributed network where all of these devices can connect to and send data bidirectionally between each other. So you could connect my Amazon uh, Alexa yeah. uh, devices and my Google Home device yeah. all together? Exactly. So as long as that device can connect to the internet, it can speak PubNub. And if it can speak PubNub, they can now talk to each other using one of our 70 different SDKs. So when I said you can any device in the world, I literally mean that because we have 70 different SDKs. Um, and so you choose your device, you slap our SDK on it, and now they can send data between each other in real time. And when I say real time, it's, uh, it's around 250 milliseconds. So you could be in Australia, I could be in California. We're still talking to each other as if we were right next to each other. So the whole point with real time is like, hey, as it happens in the real world, we want, we want to make that online experience just like that. So it's seamless. So it makes these apps more enjoyable to use because you're no longer refreshing the page or pressing the refresh button to get more information. As it happens, it's being pushed down to you. So you're building that infrastructure for developers then to write their apps sitting on top of that real-time infrastructure. Exactly. So we believe that people shouldn't be wasting their time reinventing the wheel. So we, uh, th it's an interesting story because our founders, they, they started building a real-time chat application themselves and they realized there's all, there are all these pain points when trying to scale it out because you no longer maintain that latency or you have to worry about security. You have to maintain how to scale this if I have a million users hitting my application. So they've decided that there's probably more people facing the same pain points. Let's go ahead and build this real-time infrastructure. So anyone in the gaming field or uh, a collaboration space or home automation, they all need this real-time infrastructure. So we said, hey, let's make this accessible to these developers. So now they use us as building blocks for their application. So how do you discover new devices? Because you know the IoT world yeah. is changing really quickly. Right. You know how, right. how do you discover new devices? That's so true because I used to work with IoT two years ago, and literally every day there's a cheaper, faster device that they want to use. And the great thing is they all connect to the internet. They're all amazing. But what we decided was we've built this very low-level C SDK, which can be tweaked to work. C, C as in the C programming yes, language? Yes, C, yes. C Hardware programming. Or in, yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. So yeah. we've built this out and also for Raspberry Pi, for Arduinos and all the slew of boards that come along with it, like anything that Atmel builds, Microchip, anyone builds, we have SDKs for them. So we try to, based on the demand that comes in, like developer comes in and says, hey, we have this new device, can it fit in? Our team of developers, we try to tweak it and make that possible for them. So we can make it as small as possible because all these devices have a very small footprint. Mm. So we make sure that any device can use our SDK. And we also have a, a REST-based API, so you don't have to use a particular SDK, but you just make REST calls from the device to PubNub. So do you see any patterns with the customers and the people that are using PubNub? Do you see anything that people are repeatedly doing yeah. that they want that you could share with other people? Yeah, for sure. So even when we started out PubNub, it was just a pub sub messaging system between all of these devices. And we realized that a lot more people wanted us to store their data. And so we introduced a storage feature. And then somebody came along and said, hey, I'm building this chat app. I'm able to communicate between devices. But now how do I figure out if someone's come online, like how do I know? Like, you know, in Skype you see the green dot, the red dot, all these different statuses. And so we're like, okay, so now people want presence, so let's add that. And our most recent, uh, we realized that people always have to do some kind of processing of all the data that's going between devices. Like you want to do sentiment analysis or filter out some data if someone's sending stupid things on chat, right? So people were pushing all the data back into their servers doing that processing there and pushing it, push it back, back into PubNub, which was inefficient. We were like, let's make our network programmable. So they put small pieces of business logic on PubNub. And so now, as data flows between all of these devices, we would do real-time 
data processing for them. We're not talking about big data, we're not talking about machine learning, but small things like, hey, at mentions or translating a message or filtering out content, things like that which need to be real time and can be done very quickly, we now allow developers to spin up microservices on our network to do so. So it's like we see all these trends that people are like people always are saying, hey, these are our pain points, and then we go ahead and build that on our network. So we're always talking to developers trying to figure out what they want or what they need and try to make our system better. But could someone in, in you know, put in the loop here, could they put machine learning and AI in that loop? Like say they had a smog yeah. sensor in city large cities that yeah. once you get to a certain threshold, the machine learning turns on and you figure out things and then lights turn on and around the city, people have to stop driving yeah. or something. Yeah, so the, those kind of real time alerts, right? Because maybe with your example, like there's a threshold. If it goes above this value, we need to broadcast out a message to everybody. That's exactly what we're trying to solve with functions. Because with PubNub itself, you have the ability to send out a message to millions and millions of users with just one publish API. And so combining that with these functions, which lets you hit maybe a third party service like Azure or micro, I mean uh, IBM or Watson, any of these services to do that machine language processing, you can do that from within a function and let that trigger something else. So we're hoping that people move towards this very event driven architecture which makes app very loosely coupled so that, hey, event X happened, let me trigger something else. Oh, this happened, let me reach out like publish a message. If this happened, let me store it in a database. So if it becomes event driven that way, then it's easier to build out that application and scale it. So PubNub could be in the loop in that very easily. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so yeah. we, I mean, the PMs did a good job and even our founders. So we, we, um, we foresaw this. And so we built out our architecture to be able to fit in a plug in to existing systems that can trigger a function. So you're at a software architecture event. Yeah. So why? I, I mean, I, I get the architecture of what you're doing with at the edge right, and all the right, IoT devices, right. but are the architects the ones that are going to be using the PubNub type service real time? Yeah, I mean, so PubNub is a service that you have to integrate within your existing application, and the architects are the ones who know, broadly speaking, from a higher perspective, how everything fits in. And so if we're able to talk to them, they will now convey to their developers saying, hey, this is a great product. It works well with the rest of the systems we have for our application, so why don't we use them? So I think it's a great place. So we've been talking to software architects the last two days, and it's been in very interesting. They're like, hey, we're using Kafka. Can PubNub work with this? Or why would I use PubNub versus something else? And so all these very uh, strategic questions or discussions that need to be had before a developer can actually pick up our SDK and work with it. So I think it's it's been great. And at the same time, we're learning too, because we're like, OK, people seem to be using a lot of these services. So now we know how exactly to position ours with the rest of it. So it's been a great fit. Excellent. So Bhavna, if we sit down 12 months from now yeah. and have this conversation, what will change for PubNub during that 12 months? I mean, 12 months is a long time. Yeah. What what do you see on your horizon that will change the way you guys do things? Yeah, I mean, so we're all always adding new functionalities to PubNub, but again, the ramp up time for developers to use any new feature that we launch is pretty long because you know they have to rethink the way they architect their application. They have to now trust another service to do something for them, especially when we make it so easy to build something. They're they're trusting us to build power their real time app, and so. It takes a while, actually. Like 12 months seems like a lot of time, but we're seeing slow adoption of the function. People are using it as you know added extensibility to their application. But uh, we're hoping that more people use this and like the event-driven architecture that I was talking, more people build out these loosely coupled apps that make it so easy to unlock value from multiple cloud vendors and PubNub included. So um, hoping that you know we see more amazing real-time application that people have built. That's one great thing of working in PubNub. We kind of see what everyone around the world, yeah. what kind of new applications they're building. So um, we're really hoping that that really takes off and uh, a lot more people are using the network. Excellent, Bhavna. We look forward to that conversation. Thank you. Yeah, of course. It was nice talking to you. Thank you.